We're going to go through the text. Again, it's a big picture look at the book of Ruth. Because it's a narrative, there aren't a lot of really tricky things, but I want to make sure that you notice a few things in the book. In the first video, we talked about chapter one a fair bit when it talked about how uh, Naomi's husband and her sons died and her daughter-in-laws came with her and then Orpah went back to her family and Ruth went with Naomi into the land of Israel. Now understand also that among the Israelites, the Moabites, though they were distant relatives because they were the children of Lot and one of his daughters, they were despised people. They weren't people that anyone wanted to hang out with. So Ruth took a huge risk in going with Naomi into this land, but she was committed to caring for this woman. So in chapter 2, it talks about her kinsman, Naomi's kinsman named Boaz. He was a kinsman redeemer. That means that he was there and he was able to provide an heir for Naomi's uh, husband's name so that he would always have an heir and someone to inherit the land and all that belonged to Elimelech. And Boaz is shown to be a man of great honor. He was a man of integrity. He saw that Ruth took care of her mother-in-law very well. He asked who she was. And the people said, oh yeah, this is, this is Naomi's daughter-in-law, Ruth, a Moabitess, but she has taken such good care of Ruth. So we have actually the meeting of two people of great integrity. Ruth was known for her integrity because she took care of her mother-in-law and, and laid down everything so that her mother-in-law could succeed. And Boaz was known as a man of integrity because he cared about the people that worked for him. He was a man of wealth, um, but he wasn't one that held it above anyone else. So we have a meeting of these two people of great integrity. Again, in contrast to the book of Judges, where it's extremely rare that we find anyone of integrity showing up in that book. Even the judges, many times, they did more wrong than they did right. Here we have the stark contrast of two people of great integrity. Now, Naomi, when she first goes back to Bethlehem, she says, no, don't call me Naomi, which means blessed. She said, call me Mara, which means bitter. But at the end of the book, we see that Naomi is is back to being Naomi. She is blessed because she has a grandson that she is able to raise up and to teach him the things of the Lord. So again, we see someone coming from the great depths of despair to a hope and promise from God. Again, in chapter 2, it talks about Naomi and she goes out to glean. And no one harassed her out in the fields. She did her work faithfully. She brought back everything to Naomi. She filled her, her apron with the, with the harvest and then she would go back and she would have to then beat out the grain. She'd have to take off the chaff so that they could then grind it and use it to make it for, make bread. So it was, a, it was a very arduous thing, but she did it willingly and she did it well. She didn't do it slacking. And that's something that's good to keep in mind with that. Then we have in chapter 3 where Boaz starts talking to the others and saying, hmm, who is this lady? And then he starts caring for Ruth. He gives her extra of grains. He gives her extra food at breaks. He, he allows her to sit in the shade and rest. He tells everyone, to, don't bother her. Let her do her thing. Nobody harass her. And he cared for her because he saw the integrity that she was walking in in caring for her mother-in-law. And then in chapter 4, we have the great plan. And there's an, there's an idea of euphemism that comes up here. When Naomi tells Ruth, she said, you go out to the threshing fields. The threshing fields was just a big, open, flat area, generally hard-packed earth or maybe stone, where they would lay all the grain, and then uh, animals would drag a heavy stone over the grain and would break off the, the outer hull of the seeds. And, and what you'd have left then is the good grain, and then they would, they would throw that up in the air, and the husks would blow away, and then they would keep the grain. But it was outside of town because it was kind of a big deal, and they had the big piles of grain. But you had to sleep out at the threshing floors because people would come and steal your grain. You don't want that to happen. Um, so Boaz and the other, the other ones that were doing the threshing of the grain, they were sleeping out at the threshing field outside of town. And Naomi told Ruth, she said, you go and you uncover his feet. And then whatever he says to do, to do. Now, if you're from the Western world, we'd say uncover his feet, but that means nothing. Again, that's a euphemism for uncovering more than his feet. What Ruth was doing was presenting herself as an offering, if you might say, to Boaz. That if he wanted to, he could have relations with her. And again, we see the integrity of Boaz. And he said, no, wait. I'm not the closest kinsman redeemer. There's one that is closer yet, but I'll talk to him tomorrow and we will see what happens. 
Now, before we pass any judgment on Ruth and Boaz, this was a very typical way of setting up a contract uh, for a Levite sort of marriage. This was very typical. It was not, it was not immoral. Uh, in that culture, it was seen as being the right thing to do, a typical, normal, traditional thing to do. And Boaz could have done that. He could have taken advantage of the situation. But again, showing his integrity, he said, there's one that's closer, and I'll take care of that. And so Ruth went home, and she told Naomi what had gone on, and Naomi said, okay, this is a man that's going to make sure that this is taken care of before another day goes by. And so Boaz, he sits in the gate, which is where all the leaders of the, of the towns would do. Um, they, there was a wide area in the gate where men would sit on the sides, and so anybody passing through would have to kind of go past them and be approved by them. And that's where Boaz called this meeting with the other uh, relative of Naomi's. And he said, hey, um, uh, he died, uh, Naomi's husband died, and he, his land is all there, and his property, um, and you're a closer relative, would you like that? And the man said, well, yes, of course I would like that. And he said, okay, but also what you have to understand is that uh, Ruth, the Moabitess, you will also have to take her as a wife. And the man was not willing to do that. Because if a son was born out of that relationship, then that son would get all that Elimelech and had and Malon and Chilion, all of the, the, their stuff, and that the nearest relative then wouldn't get anything. So it would be kind of a lose-lose thing. And also she was not a Jewish woman. She was a Gentile. She was a Moabite. She was a despised person. He was not willing to risk his inheritance and his reputation so that Malon and Chilean and Elimelech's um, her heritage and inheritance could continue on. So Boaz said, okay, I'm willing to take her. I'm willing to take all of this. Let's sign the deal. And they signed the deal by passing a shoe. And all the elders of the town were there. They witnessed the whole thing. They said, yes, this is the right thing to do. This was good. So Boaz married Ruth. We don't know if Boaz had another wife, if he was married before, if he had other children. But that really isn't all that important to the story. What's important to the story is that out of integrity and obedience, God raised up Obed. And out of Obed came Jesse, and out of Jesse came David. And out of David and his line eventually became the Messiah. Jesus, Son of God, born of Mary. And we see this line and how God has laid it out. And I think the big picture of the book of Ruth it's not, is Ruth the hero, or is Boaz the hero, or why is Naomi bitter? But that God is the hero, and he can bring about anything so that his plan is fulfilled. It is a book of faith. It is a book, book of inspiration. It is a book that challenges us to walk in integrity, as Ruth and as Boaz did, in obedience to what the Lord had laid out. And God took care of them. And again, like I said, it is often seen as that it was written as a justification for the Davidic line of the kingdom, um, and generally is thought that Samuel wrote it. But whichever way you look at it, the story is God is the hero. Ruth and Boaz are faithful, and the kingdom comes through the line of a Moabitess woman, and out of that comes the Messiah. Have a great time with this book. It's one of my favorites.